All right, so we'll open the FinCon meeting at 6 0. That's interesting. My laptop says 6 0 2, and that computer says 6 0 6. And I got 6 0 2. All right. Well, we're going to go with 6 0 2. That seems to be the prevailing time that we're going to start. Uh, why is this transcribing? All right. Um, lost my agenda. All right, so first thing we'll do is go over previous meeting minutes. Um, Trying to put them up on the screen. <clears throat> All right, I know we didn't get a chance to send these out, but these are the meeting minutes. Uh, this is from October 10th, so we're going back a little bit. Um, Give folks a, a minute to review real quick. This is the meeting we discussed with the Board of Health. Yes, sir. <laughs> Oh, mine again? No. Not yet. Field hockey games are getting in. So, the only action that was taken out of this, which uh, we can talk about a status on, was the revolving fund for trash subscriber fees. I don't know if that's been brought up with the select board or any town administrator conversations. Um, so, we can cover that in a minute. What was the, can you say that again, Michael? Was the question? So back in October, the Board of Health came oh. and oh, had a discussion yeah. and okay. they were pitching the idea to yeah. set up a revolving fund for trash subscriber fees. Yes, so we um, have definitely made progress there. Um, we actually scrapped the idea of a revolving fund mm -hmm. per se, but we're gonna look to establish an enterprise fund um, so that the monies can be self-contained yep. and separate from the general fund. So right now, as you'll see as we go through the, the budget presentation, that currently still sits as a revenue source as well as an expenditure. But essentially, um, after a successful vote at ATM to create the enterprise fund, um, that would be kind of wiped off the revenue side, wiped off the expenditure side, and sort of self-contained into its own um, into its own fund. <clears throat> And that was just a a, between the board, the recommendation of myself, um, just talking it through with the accountant and how that would be structured. And it tends to accomplish the goals that they are set out to accomplish, which is essentially were to make sure that the subscriber based program, any proceeds, um, any type of surplus would be returned to the same subscribers who initially paid for the program. So. Um, we worked through a little bit of that, the administrative costs as it relates to some indirect costs of, say, my office, um, bill generation, administration, customer service and attention, 
the board a health agent and sort of the, the proportion of time that they would be spending to, to maintain the program essentially. Um, because the whole this a lot of this came about with municipal trash services and, and um, expenses were being sort of tied just to subscribers. So we talked through the whole situation um, and landed at a place where the subscriber program um, is a great benefit to the town, great benefit to the residents, and it will be self-contained within an enterprise fund. And the enterprise fund will be, um, uh, I would say build, it's just all through accounting, an indirect cost of administration. Um, and then the municipality for their their part in services will essentially pay the services for the town through that administration to be an offset. Yeah. So that makes sense. So that's kind of where we landed. Um, more to come on that after ATM and a successful vote there to get that enterprise fund established, and then we'll do the accounting work on the back end. Yeah. Technically. Uh, just a go ahead. I'm sorry. Just a, just a question on that. Were they able to work out? Um, each department being able to be responsible for their own costs. I know that was like a bit of a sticking point. Yeah, I think that um, what we determined was that each there's sort of two prongs to that. One is evaluating usage. Um, so making sure that the the appropriate usage is happening across departments, right? So we don't have a four year dumpster when there's only a need for a total or two. And so that's the first part of it, making sure that we're scaled properly to each department. And then the other part of that is um, the idea that the municipality and sort of a general building maintenance um, trash service budget kind of line item um, would handle all of the fees associated with trash pickup at said locations. So the library doesn't have to be responsible for the library and this one doesn't have to be. So it's it's a municipal trash budget sort of line item that equates to, again, the municipal services that are the indirect cost to the program to administer it. So it ends up sort of being that trade-off <clears throat> and not a, a direct hit to each department, though I will say after this, the program determines that two toters is enough for each location. I'm just making that up. But then the senior center says, well, well, no, we like our four-year dumpster. Okay, well, then you can pay the up uptick in the four-year dumpster if you deem that you just like to have a four-year dumpster or whatever the case may be. So I think that there's that's going to be, you know, a process as we... A base foundational service, and you would, you would like to upgrade your service for your personal department then justify and justify... And, and, sure. and by doing this... Subscribers have carried the cost of the municipality through this program. We're eliminating that to the subscribers, correct? Because the town is picking up their fair share. Correct. Correct. Because conversely, the the point that I was the accountant and I, because again, we're looking at numbers and we're looking at all this stuff and saying, but hang on, if we don't do it this way, and there is not an indirect cost sort of build back to the program, right? For all of the time spent generating billing and, and processing payments and all of those things then essentially the entire town is paying for the administrative part of just the subscriber based benefit yeah. does that make sense so it's almost the counter opposite of the argument that they were making so it's so again what we basically determined in, in kind of a nutshell the subscribers shouldn't be responsible for all of the town-wide services right the subscribers should have mm -hmm. that program those monies should be isolated and given back to the folks that are signing up for that service. We're going to handle that through an enterprise fund. Yeah. They also agreed that there is an indirect administrative cost that should be charged to the subscribers mm -hmm. for the service. Yep. And so mm -hmm. through that, we balanced out, well, the work effort on the admin administrative side with the, um, with the cost of the trash services for the town. And it ends up being that we can offset one another. Will resident subscribers see a reduction in their bill at all because, or is it an offset of the administrative costs that are being added in order to do this, offset the reduction of us paying for the rest of the municipalities? Yeah, so I, I don't think that you're gonna see an immediate off, like increase or decrease to that. It's all contractual, essentially. Um, but again, if if the town isn't quote unquote billing the enterprise fund for the administrative services, or we do, right? Yeah. For the indirect costs. But then 
the program bills the municipality, we're talking about like seventeen thousand dollars. Yeah, I know it's not, it's not a huge being problem. an offset. Yeah, but I remember like so problem. during the meeting, I had joked like, oh, well, I'm paying for the senior center dumpster. So if I need a dumpster, I can just go to the senior. Totally. Center, right? Yeah, no, because I'm, I'm paying for it. Right? <laughs> uh, so there's a piece of this of. Uh, the cost to service the town, yep. right? That doesn't change. It's contractual. It's just splitting where the funding comes from to pay for it, right? So uh, the the municipality is picking up its fair share now. So technically the yes. subscriber base, the subscriber number on average goes down. But because we've added an administrative cost, now that goes back up. Correct. Right. Yep. OK. Any other questions on that? All right, can I get a motion to approve the minutes of October 10th? I'll make a motion to approve those minutes October 10th. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, usually much faster at this sharing thing at work. You don't have your books, Mike. That's what it is. Well, it's that you got to use the online version. <laughs> but not my personal computer here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree with the online versus <laughs> local and maps. Mm -hmm. That's better with the maps. Well, the online, I couldn't even get going. So I had to find it. We want to make it Microsoft license. Okay. 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 All right. So these are the meeting minutes from 11 6. This was right before we had the STM. And we needed to vote on a few articles. All right, can I get a motion to approve the meeting minutes of 11 6? Make a motion to approve those minutes. All the six. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Nick. I, I don't believe I was at that meeting. Okay. Uh, you're right. Not present. Okay. All right, we're good. Um All right, so update from the capital planning working group. Um, Adam, do you want to uh, give an update on how that's been going? Oh, great. Oh, um, <laughs> oh it's, it's been a, a good process. I kind of got into it a bit later, so I, I definitely feel free to jump in. Uh, but it's been a great process to trying to map out you know, some of the questions the finance committee has had of where, what's the un, unexpected ask going to be? What's the big ticket item going to be that wasn't on anybody's radar? Trying to just lay, the, lay that all out in a comprehensive format to say, here's uh, you know, five years worth of potential capital ass and long term planning uh, going through to each department saying, What's, when do you think you'll need your next cruiser, your next piece of equipment, your next whatever? And then some big ticket items, which we'll get into as well, uh, as far as, you know, buildings and large purchases, things like that. And it's been a pretty, really fluid process, thanks to Mike Kettle leading it and Jody as well. But um, yeah, it's, we can go into some spreadsheets on it, but it's really just trying to lay out what we're forecasting in the next five years, what's what that total cost would be, what we identified, try to identify sources at the time, what's in, what's in current budget, and then what is the, you know, the delta going to be for actually increasing budget, uh, and then from there, how do we pay for it? Yeah. Um, that was really, really high level. You guys no, that was great. That was great. I mean, I think that the only uh, flavor that I'd add to that is back in December, um, the select board had asked to, you know, look at some capital planning and strategy around that. Um, and so we were able to lay out some framework as it related to that. Those are some of the tools I had shared with you, Mike, um, just with the five year outlook and what are we looking at? And so 
you know, one of the big things since I've been here that I've heard a lot from the FinCom is just the visibility into the request before they become a request, the proactive versus reactive nature, the ability to be forward thinking and take advantage of opportunities before they come in need. And so what we've worked on over the last few months is to really identify um, really some structure and some tools that we can leverage to be able to make this be a fluid process, make it be iterative, make it be, you know, um, transparent and very consumable to somebody that's not in it all the time. So I, I think, you know, an advisory board like the FinCom, you know, you guys need to be equipped with information, the accessibility of information, the knowledge, the detail to some degree so that you're able to make a wise decision an informed decision based on information. And when you don't have information, it puts you in a really tricky position to be able to say, well, I don't, I don't even know what to say because I don't really even know the, the thing, but okay, sure. So I think that um, it's created a lot of, um, it, it's created a lot of opportunity to put that down on paper. Um, Mike definitely has been instrumental in sort of um, fleshing out a lot of the data that we've solicited from departments. Um, we've gone sort of, all the way across the board saying, tell me everything from this big to this big. We're going to put it on paper. We're going to sort it out. We're going to get some context to your ask. Um, we're going to, you know, measure your ask against others. We're going to, you know, stack rank it based on the same set of criteria. And, you know, all of this is, in my mind, we're really accelerating this. This is not the time necessarily that we do capital planning. Um, capital planning would be done in you know July or August for the upcoming next budget cycle, um, almost a year in advance. So what we're really hoping to do is, and we've been doing this, is sort of running in two lanes with the budget, which I'm taking a lead on, and Mike's sort of, you know, I've handed over that part, and, and Mike's doing that. We're working together still on that. <laughs> um, but no, it's been a really, really nice collaborative effort where we're able to kind of work together and put things on paper um, and, and go through the process and know that it's iterative. But also, you know, it's it's not just an exercise. We I feel like we're at a place where we really have solid data to pull some triggers and say, OK, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And we feel comfortable about it. Sure. Um, it's not reactive. It's it's very, very much. We know what the ask is. We know um, where the needs are and we're able to leverage you know, some uh, one-time funding, we're able to leverage some, um, actually a couple different sources of one-time mm -hmm. funding, which we can get into. Um, but I felt really good about the process and, and where we are. So, um, do you want to show it? Yeah, I can do that. And as, as she brings it up, I think, to Jody's point, this is going to be part of the budget process. Yeah. So it's not going to be a separate thing. And what we're trying to do is dovetail this piece now into uh, the FY25 budget process. So when you have a budget hearing or with a select board for reviewing thing, these are recommendations that are coming to you to review and the select board review to make final decisions on yeah. as Warren articles. And going forward, we, we now need to solicit a formal committee for the next fiscal year. Right. But I think that um, you'll see this, Joey said this starts off in the summer. And by the time we get to this point, this has already been baked. You know, so we just really <laughs> accelerated the FY25 focus. Mm -hmm. And you'll see, you know, you'll see the four or five year outlook based on what we know now. <clears throat> yeah, to your point, the 25 focus was, was the primary, but yeah. we got a good view into 26, 27, 28 is what we know today. That's good. And what will really solidify this on a going forward basis to kind of finish rounding it out is our financial policies. And so once we have financial policies to say that this is what our capital plan looks like, this is how we lock into not who's the loudest, squeakiest, um, who got something last time, who needs something this time. It's the same basis of criteria that if we say we're going to do X and we're going to do X. And if we need to reprioritize something based on new information or an opportunity that comes about that makes sense for us to do that because we can get something at a discount or whatever the case may be, then we'll have hard and fast policies to tell us this is how we're going to operate. And so there's not a change with every board or with every advisory committee or whatnot. Um, so that'll kind of solidify our process as we as we formalize it even more. Does that process need to be a bylaw in some way or? I mean, I, it's really just in our operational policies. Yeah, this, is, this is purely operate. This is about yeah. here's what we know. Yeah. yeah. You know, so <clears throat> I don't think yeah. it's not a bylaw. Yeah. 
I mean, if it, if we had a town charter, that would be different. But our yes, first, you know, our operational policies. Maybe someday. Next. Next year. I think the other thing too is the working group is going to tie this up in a bow and hand it off to the committee. So there will be documented policy procedure on how this process is intended to work. You'll yeah. see the artifacts they can use going forward. And, you know, yeah, something to use. It's always better to have something to poke at than a right. sheet of paper. So this is super tiny for all of you guys, and I'm going to blow it up in a second. Um, I can probably put it in presentation mode. But um, what I do want to share out, and I can put it in the folder, uh, the FinCom folder on SharePoint, is these are documents that I pulled um, and modified to be or amended. So they were pulled from the DLS. I'm not. I'm a big fan of leveraging resources that are standardized across the industry and across the municipality and the municipal space. The DLS has some great resources um, that we, we've started to leverage. Um, but if you go back to the framework presentation, it'll sort of be, a, that was from December 13th, but it'll walk through sort of the methodology around this capital planning process. And this artifact is one of my favorite ones because it's a really great summarized view of our projected needs in the kind of blow it up. But if you can kind of see this section right here, I know it says uh, part one capital budget um, and then kind of part three, the capital program. So it's going to give you your projection for, you know, the upcoming fiscal years. Um, what it does is it it's enables us to say, okay, what department are we looking at? What's the description of the item? How much is the item? And then right down below, if you look at this like a balance sheet, you'll see that the total of asks over all the years is here. And then when you go further down, this is the balance of all the asks in terms of, well, where's it coming from, right? So we have the levy, we have borrowing, we have free cash, we have you know, capex stabilization. There's different funding sources that are available to us throughout the year um, that we're able to leverage. And again, this helps us to match up resources based on what we know to be coming. Um, so again, if Mike, you want to take it from here and kind of talk through some of the the asks for this year. Yeah, I don't feel the need to. <laughs> if you'd like me to. Um, yeah. So our folks have been FY25. Those are real. We talked about it this morning. We met and. Today, we actually said, are these the ones we're recommending? Uh, we moved some things out of FY25 based on stakeholder department head feedback that we don't need to do this year. And we decided on the far right, the funding um, source, or the, you know, that, that Jody just walked us through. So um, fire, I mean, basically everything that the department had said, FY25, we think we can manage. There was one request, leaf vacuum to highway that, um, John decided that he wants to go the way he has this year, so we moved out to FY26. Um, as you look at this, some of the grade out numbers are having our, our firm, and there's a couple of ways we need to look at it. So um, specifically, we look at 14, 15, and 16, so the leases. So what we're, you know, Chief Kersey already has his vehicle replacements built into his operational budget, budget but due to uh, inflation and cost, we are actually recommending we up his operational budget, which will cover those first two leases. So he will keep that within the levy, his operational budget, but we're also looking at doing a third replacement and buying it outright with capital funds to kind of keep him ahead of the curve. That type of thing will then probably leave his capital request for fleet replacement for the next foreseeable future in his budget. And it'll just be more of a, something we track. We don't need to figure out how to fund it. Mm -hmm. um, some of these things, if you look over there, you see committed column J. So there are actually two things we, the select board has already approved to purchase. One is uh, the, the rescue replacement um, for the fire department. There was an opportunity to get a decent truck at about a fraction of the cost, 125K. So we used ARPA funds to go get it. That this commit the vehicle, he's had a vehicle that's been out of commission. It's not going to cost 800,000 to repair. You know, get new. So we said go get that one. So we said yes to that. Hot box replacement. I think you're aware that you know there was an accident in the hot box and a, and a pickup in the highway department is out of commission. So we've been leasing a hot box, a three month lease. We have an opportunity to lease to buy. So we said we'll formally go into a purchase agreement, buy buy a hot box, get the benefit of the lease payments to go towards purchase price, 
along with some insurance uh, money based on the accident. And we, John has gone ahead and initiated that. So that's why you see sort of a yes with the committee, because that actually we know now we've earmarked ARPA funds and brought that balance down as we go forward. Okay. Um, similar, what's coming up probably Wednesday is Road 17. Uh, that is the other part of that highway. As there's a truck that's out of commission. John has specced and priced uh, a replacement for that. And we've got an insurance rebate. So we had used originally earmarked at 75K, spec to 61. We've got insurance. We brought that down to 43. We're probably going to authorize that. I would be, if I had to guess, as a member of the select board, I think we're going to authorize him to go ahead and purchase that next Wednesday. And just because he's short two or three trucks right now. Yeah. And then I said the leaf vacuum, we moved from FY25 to FO26. And we, that was at his, we said, you know, what would you change? What could we do here? He's like, well, I want to give the leak vacuum repaired as you made repairs last spring. I want to give it another go. So, you know, that could push up to another year, but through the process, we'll reprioritize FY26. Hey, John, how's the leak vacuum? Yeah. Right. And possibly push that out further. Um, the senior center is the big ticket item. That's <laughs> further high that you're aware of. That's probably coming in about 13.2. Okay. Right. And what we're doing here is when you get look, look more closely at this, we're also, um, and I'll let you speak to the, um, the, the capturing of the debt and how we're using that, but that's going to be a different presentation you'll hear. Yeah. So I'll be um, glad anytime you want me to yeah. do a full presentation and come and join you. But, but I think right now the select board received that presentation and I think we, some of us said yes, some of us said tentatively yes, but I think we're going to look to support it. I think we're looking to hear from you guys as well to say, do we go forward? But I bring that up because row 19 is um, something we looked at. It's 25K. And we actually you know, looked at the legacy senior center. If we go ahead with the proposal to build a new senior center, the question is, what are we going to do with the old senior center? Mm -hmm. Right. So what we're doing here is we're suggesting let's see some seed money for study, engineering, design, and the thought was that actually highway parks might have a uh, opportunity to leverage that building so instead i think you've probably heard about a park shed yeah i guess uh, i'm confused i thought that the senior center proposal was building was expanding the current site when we did the design of requirements yeah. uh the parking situation the well situation the septic and the massive reconstruction we're going to do we could build new as well as not so we did a look at four sites through the town, made a site selection of North Avenue Route 16. Uh, we looked at Morrissey Drive, we looked at uh, Hopedale Street and North Ave, and the current site. And we weighed all the pros and cons with all the logistics, traffic patterns. We came up with North Ave. Um, Which yeah. one, North Ave, Hopedale, or North Ave and 16? North and 16. North and 16. Yeah. And we've, uh, so we focused our architect from initial drawings. Had him design for that. Uh, got an engineer, and all of the stuff was funded last town meeting. Uh, and um, we have this plan for that coming together. We're going to go to the town meeting and look for the 13.2. It came in originally around 17. And we were going to this big design. And uh, the big impacts happened in the pandemic year inflation, 24% increase in building costs. So we all know that. So at the end of the day, we're sitting at 13.2. And it's a new building on that site. And we're working with uh, Conservation Committee and Parks and Recs to build potentially trails for Ann and her crew. Handicap accessible because we don't have any in town. And also some recreational activities that be town. The senior center is taking the place. full deck right now. This is great. He doesn't have memory now. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the senior center is not just the senior center, it's the senior and community center. We now have 10 active users. We've had 20 in the past Boy Scouts, Lions, other groups and organizations. So we're going to expand that. I don't know if you got any of you guys have been down there, but we're going to do an open discussion panel too. In addition, I'll come here privately. But you should take a walk down. Every time they do something, they reconfigure a room. I do it. I do a singing program. I change all the furniture. I do a meal. I, it's just it was out of business about ten years ago. We, we send people away. But at the end of the day, I think we've got a good architect. We've gone through a professional estimator. We have inflation factors built into it. 
because we won't be starting if we're successful until the spring of 25. I think we have enough contingency in there. If we manage correctly, we should be able to manage it to budget. I don't expect surprises on it. Here we are. I don't doubt the the need. I'm just interested in how we're going to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we actually explored with Jody and the rest of the team. And I think one of the line items we talked about is debt capital. Here we are. Part of that will be applied to that. The other one is going to ask for an overwrite. Tom me. Overwrite. Well, the debt obligation. Debt exclusive. Debt exclusive. Debt exclusive. Uh, I mean, that's it's going to go to the, to the public for an override. And we're trying grants, we're trying everything else. Don't say override, you're going to scare me. Oh, whatever, <laughs> whatever you call it. That's essentially what I <clears throat> say that around schools. <laughs> what do you want to call this thing? It's a debt exclusion. Debt exclusion. Yeah, because yeah, it's, a, it's a very big difference between. Yeah, so being on the other side for the past 40 years, going mm -hmm. voting for the school, the police station, I always view it as an override. Yeah, it's always it's it's actually a very important distinction because but never put over. Right. That's a debt exclusion. Actually, without an underwrite. Yeah, I'll make it. Yeah, I was just about to make that joke. You could do an underwrite. <laughs> so yeah. just just bringing it back here real quick, not to get into the details, but. If you look at the tabs of equipment, fleet, and facilities, this is actually the data collection that Jody talked about. So we've actually got a good insight in terms of the things we need to be responsible for, whether or not there's a request for them or not. So we've captured fleet. Um, I think the big thing for me was actually facilities. When we start to look at all town-owned property and actually capture it and think about like Memorial Field and you know Grover Field and just all around town anything with a structure that we're responsible for we, we captured here right um so i think the, the yeah, that maintenance means. and the the oversight is the big piece that right. you really hit me over the head with because i'm thinking what do they want she's like don't wonder what they want yet let's get an inventory assessment plan that first so you know I right it. and as, as we as we move into this too like the capital budget piece and this is displayed this way for now but i would essentially move this column over call this fy26 and then look at this capital budget portion to be that maintenance piece, right? So if we have, you know, roofs and sidewalks and windows and things that we need to do to maintain our facilities and our structure beyond the normal, you know, check the elevator, get the septic pumped, all that kind of maintenance stuff. I look at this as capital maintenance in the sense of let's be good stewards of what we have, right? Before things fall apart, before things, you know, go by the wayside or become a, a liability, what do we have built into our capital budget that we can have within our purview to say, okay, look, crazy enough, shingle prices have gone way down. We have a roof to do, but like, what if we did three roofs right now? What does that look like? And are there economies of scale that we can get by doing things like that? So if if we don't know about them and they're not on our radar, then we're never gonna be able to take of advantage of opportunities like that. So we wanna get to a place where within our operating budget, we have a capital line where we can talk through some of these things as ongoing maintenance that are bigger ticket things as opposed to um, just dealing with them as they come up. Now we need a new thing or a new, you know, a I, big ask. I have a question on that, but Nick, you've got your hand raised. I do. Um, I, it's just going back to the senior center. Um, I, I was uh, I, I sat in on the select board meeting last week on that and uh, was able to listen in. And I just had um, uh, a thought and and a question. I guess the thought first would be: Has there been um, discussion among the committee about quote rebranding it as a community center versus a senior center? There's been um, quite a bit of that. <laughs> Uh, there's been quite a um, bit of that. In fact, uh, we're focusing it as a, a co community center, but we're trying to keep the moniker for senior because a lot of seniors use senior and community center, community and senior center. It's more of an emotional thing with the seniors in town, uh, but it is a community center. And I want to start to really brand our material that way because I see that facility open for the whole town. Yeah, I see I, I, the capability, that capability there, no question. I think there's a yeah, I, 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 generation I just think, use idea that we keep talking yeah. about. Yeah, I, I just think when we talk, when we think about like the impact on taxpayers for the uh, for the build out of that, the idea of promoting it 
as a community center where the idea that it's available for use for all residents versus maybe just a subset of residents, it, it may have greater um, ability to uh, to pass yeah. or to be thought of in maybe in a different light in maybe by some some folks. So I, I just kind of throw that out there as a suggestion. That's a good point. We're trying to grapple with that name. And to me, I'd call it a community center that the seniors normally use during the daytime. The community uses in the evening. We're talking about a basketball court there. Yeah, so, the basketball. I, mean, I think that demonstrates something. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah I guess uh, I, I would back Nick on that. I, I, I would highly suggest uh, over indexing on the community piece of this, especially as We've gone through multiple overrides, at least in my tenure here, that were focused on the school and uh, the areas of negativity of asking, you know, taxpayers to increase what they're paying to the town. I would very highly recommend uh, over indexing on the community aspect. I agree. And the intent is to to use it as a complete community facility. This facility, if you think about it, on the weekends, if you had a town event or a party or the Boy Scouts and there's a full kitchen and we have a kitchen now, but it's about this. There's a full kitchen in, in his rooms. It'll be a nominal cost to take care of the cleaning that the resident one has to take care of. And yeah, I mean, I, I see posts on Facebook all the time, like, well, where can I rent a room for a party? And right. And all the other stuff. It's like, yeah, it'd be great to have a local community center. Yeah. But anyway, oh, then I guess, Nick, you were also on the call last week. You mentioned about the soil sample. Yeah. I got confirmation that it's uh, no problems with the whole site. Oh, that's great. Yeah, great, so that's I know that has been a concern in the past up there. It just came back and the soil is fine. There's no problems with it. Came in 100%. Oh, there's a 600 page report that I'll be posting, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'll, I'll take the, I'll take the short line there of everything's fine. <laughs> uh, and, and then one question would be just um, the increase in operating cost for the new facility. So obviously it's going to be if we're going to be keeping the old facility there's going to be the maintenance cost and the heating cost for the current building but in addition to that there'll be additional costs for the new building and have we been able to factor in exactly what that additional operating cost will be um you know cleaning heat uh and any yeah. additional insurance or any additional costs that we may incur, are we, we able to capture that and understand kind of what the impact of that will be on the town? HVAC maintenance, as we've learned with this fabulous building. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> Some of the things that we're doing with the facility, it is being energy, extremely energy physician, uh, efficient and running full, uh, full heat pumps and e touring, heading towards E. Uh, we don't have a grant to put the solar on it, but we will hopefully by the time we build. Uh, so we're looking at the efficiency from the heat maintenance standpoint, not bad. The cleaning standpoint, I think I agree that we probably need to look at that. I went to the Upton Center and they just opened up their community center library. And they're still trying to understand their operating cost differences. I look at the old building and if we do this correctly, we start to study. Right after we approve the center, the day we move out, we should be ready to be getting some use out of that building there existing. And the cost may be net, but we'd also be solving facilities problems for highway and, and parks and rec and a bunch of other things. Yeah, I think we just want to make sure we're using the right apples to apples comparison, right? I think this building specifically surprised us in overall maintenance costs and what it's taken to, to pay for that. So, you know, looking at older technologies, what maintenance costs there, yeah. just make sure we're using apples to apples. Well, I think we can nail down the maintenance costs of the current building. Project that. I mean, the new building. The new building. Well, I, I think I think Mike indicated that they would be able to give us an estimate of based on their design. Here are the benefits. Well, yeah. not the benefits, but the costs yeah. in running a building like this yeah. based on square footage. Um, I think the other aspect, I think it's a to do we still have is from an operational budget standpoint, what's the COA operational budget impact? Yeah. Because the idea is there, there's an opportunity for more, more programming, et cetera. So I think there's still work, you know, Amy sure. still trying to put heads around like as we go into that new building, here are the benefits and by the way, here, here's a cost. The fortunate thing, most of the funds, most of the programs that are driven out of that building, and there's hundreds of them, are driven by the friend the friends of elders. 
and a small operational budget that Amy gets and also small grants that she gets and small contributions of the participants, $5 fee or some dollar fee. So the programs, and she's got a volunteer base that's unbelievable. So fortunately, we don't pay for all the people who clean the tables and set up the meals and do the programs. We just have to pay for the, I'll call it the talent that comes in to deliver programs. And we don't pay for that, actually. Right? So this has been a great uh, piece of information. I want to stay a little bit more focused on the, the rest of, of okay. this here. Um, how does the, so the maintenance cost, right, of, like you were just talking about, roofing tiles and all that other stuff, is that really capital expenditure? Or I'm just thinking about things that are amortized, right? So now we have these cap this capital that we're purchasing. I didn't think the maintenance of capital equipment actually would be captured. Here. No, so, so so the senior mm -hmm. center expansion, the reason that we put this on here is because this is a this is just for lack of a, another place to put it, okay. to kind of keep it on the radar and in, in our sites. Um, but that kind of thing wouldn't necessarily be a capital request that wouldn't okay. necessarily go on here. Um, but it's rather sort of a placeholder to keep it on our radar and keep it at the forefront with all the other things that have come up as requests. Um, more specifically, and I'll, I won't dive too deep into this, but we have some debt that's rolling off this year. And if you look at the debt that we have secured right now um, from years ago for this police station, the Fino land, the library renovations, things like that, take us into about 2036. And slowly by slowly, that debt is staggered in such a way that we keep our, our debt service level, which keeps our debt capacity level. The importance of doing that is to make sure that we keep our tax rate stable. So the last thing, you know, that's good for our residents is to have a down year where it's, yay, our taxes went down, then they go up, in, you know, crazy. So the idea is if you keep your, your debt capacity level um, and you capture that year over year, even when debt falls off, then it, it keeps stability into your budget. And so that is the case where we are at this year. We have about $343,308 that rolled off from debt um, in FY24. So in FY25, we won't have that. What that means is that if we're able to fund a one-time capital project in the amount of three hundred forty-three dollars and three hundred eight, sorry, three hundred. Uh, sorry, uh, you get my point. That we can use a lever to secure a one-time capital exclusion. What that is, it's the Warren article that allows us to spend that three hundred forty-three dollars. We are allowed <laughs> to spend that money on a project in that given year. And it keeps our debt capacity stable and it keeps our tax rate stable. Um, if we were in a position with the center to be able to secure debt in FY25, then this would be sort of a moot point and we'd use that, that capacity somewhere else. Um, or we would just lessen our payment for the year to kind of balance us off. But we're not in a position to secure debt right now for FY25. So um, this is an opportunity for us to sort of seed that project. And we've made a recommendation to take that debt roll off and put it into sort of the startup costs. Um, should the senior center pass, then we're able to leverage that debt capacity for that purpose. I think the um, challenge for this ATM is going to be there's a lot of dependencies on articles. So as an example, the senior center goes first. If that does not pass, then we may need to have a separate motion on the to capture the debt exclusion towards a different project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have multiple variations depending on the outcome. And then things like seed money to the Legacy Center, we pass over that article. So right. it's going to be an interesting uh, yeah, the rest meeting. The recreation stuff from CPA. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, OK, rolling in uh, future school big asks, right? So we're talking about a new senior center, but you know, so we've let's um, go. <laughs> we, I, I've got the copy of this, uh, Menden Upton's five-year yeah, capital yeah. plan. They're not looking at anything after FY25, but one of the things we're going to do in the working group is start to overlay that to say, so you might see that table, maybe a, a, a similar table for the school yep. across years. So we're going to marry that in. And I'm on that subcommittee for the capital planning with them. So as Perfect. a 
Why we do have visibility into some of their plans as well. Um, we've really started to collaborate a lot more um, and just been open and honest about conversations of what's coming down the pike, both for, you know, NITMA, NISCO, um, some of the repairs, upgrades, and things like that for those buildings that are aging. And so if we can time that in ways to structure our debt in such a way that we can handle an obligation for the senior center and then as our other debt rolls off in other future years, we stagger our payments and there's a lot of nitty gritty to doing that, but we'll not get into that, but we do that in such a way to kind of manage it. Um, so we keep our, our numbers pretty, you know, consistent year over year. Mm -hmm. And that that's really for minimal impact to taxpayers. I think what we can do is there's, there are synergies more than likely as you look ahead to when you see the school's plans, uh, athletic fields, there's a number of different groups that want to drive athletic fields. Yeah. I think we have a better opportunity to kind of, you know, coordinate or collaborate on athletic fields, especially when you start looking at potentially new opportunities for locations going forward, right? So the more we, we just want to keep it in front of us yep. so we see what it is. But more importantly, in front of you. <laughs> this will be part of the budget folder yeah. document, so it's yeah. going to be opened up for everyone to look at. Perfect. All right, uh, I am good on the Capital Planning Working Group update. So do you guys have any other questions? Nick, do you have any questions? You're on mute if you're in turn. <laughs> I'm just gonna um, thank you, Adam, for his participation. Yeah. It's great to have um, the fin come on. That's a great segue too to what I was gonna ask, oh, is okay. that we are looking to form a formal committee. So this is a working group, is, but we wanna have a capital improvement committee Mm -hmm. CIC because CBC is already taken, can't use that one. But I do think that having uh, FinCom participation to be appointed to that committee yeah. would be okay. something I would ask for. Okay. I would do it, but <clears throat> the select board can't be part of more than one. Can't be. I can't be part of another committee. So, I, so. Yeah, but Phil can. I'm going to Phil. Um, you can leverage me huh? when we get to pause these procedures done. But I'd ask you guys to consider that. So I think. Totally yes, keeping this alive is going to be huge. Doing it the yes. first time is one thing, but oh, yeah. keeping it in perpetuity is huge. Um, it, have we had any discussions about changing our bylaws around uh, the maximum amount that we're able to save in a capital? Yes. Plan? Yeah, I think <laughs> that um, it's it's not um, actually uh, Mike and I discussed it after the meeting today, so I believe we're for it. I think there's a couple of different perspectives. It's going to be, it's a legislative process to change that. So it's not as simple. So that's uh yeah, we didn't make sense. We gotta maybe get the ball rolling. There's a thought around the concept of stabilization. Do we need to worry about it, et cetera? Um, the, what it comes down to is do we want a capital expenditure account specifically with capital expenditures, or would we just say, well, it's a form of stabilization, we could pool it and not worry about the cap. So that's a question. I mean, yeah. I'm I lean more towards let's put it in capital, a capex account yeah. with a specific per, uh, purpose purpose yeah. and work on moving that cap. But it won't be May. Is my point. Okay. You know, but okay. we if we think it makes sense, we'll get the ball rolling. Do we think that that limitation will hurt anything about our plans or thoughts or? Not this year. Not this year. But I think the, the, one of the things we are talking about phase six is perpetual financing of a program like this. That's one of those. We have sort of pre-ATM and post-ATM work for the working group. Yeah, that's sort of that post-ATM to kind of say, well, how can we figure out a way to fund it? And um, we'll be able to take a deeper dive. So yeah. I, I think right now the work that we've done between November and now is a lot um, and, and got us to a place where we have a working live document that is executable, which I think is fantastic. Yeah. Um, I think what we now can do is start to refine the things about, you know, whether it's our funding sources, our accounts. I mean, I think about when I first started and sort of the legacy things you inherit and you're like, hmm, okay, well, let that roll for a while. And then you get busy with lots of other things and you're like, okay, I got to go back to this and make sure that this makes sense, right? So it might've made sense 10 years ago, but cyclically, you know, and as things evolve, we need to take a, a prudent review. So I think that's right in, on the, the lines of what you're talking about, Mike and, and Mike. Um, so it's on our radar, but not 
not a serious pursuit at this time, okay. but in the near future. Okay. As long as we don't think it's got a fair statement, Mike. Yeah, and I, and I think if we're worried about a cap, I would say you know, I should definitely put more into stabilization. Yes. And just kind of earmark it on the side yeah. saying we yeah. know what the intent was. You know what I mean? Yeah, we have a way to get around it if we get it. But, um, yeah, I, free cash. I would rather have uh, an account that is a targeted mm -hmm. expectations. This is yes. where to go and yep. figure out it funded. Like, we're going to put in all this effort and have a new committee and yes. actually put in, do it in earnest. I don't want to, you know, have. Right. Yeah. And, and <laughs> what's interesting is in what what I've learned is when you look, take a look at the spreadsheet and think about all the funding sources, you know, we started with saying, well, there's three. And then we said, well, there's this one, then there's that one. Mm -hmm. One of the things that really to keep an eye on is like uh, recapturing dollars. Mm -hmm. So you think about it, that that 75K for a truck, had we just allocated that and then he ends up spending, six, you know, 43 bring that back into the appropriate funding source. So it's not just CapEx, although yeah. we need to, there's a lot of opportunity in different places you can go. Yeah. I say we sell all the town land and we'll be funded for a while. <laughs> no, I mean, there's work Where's everybody going to walk then? Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of work to still be done. Yeah. All right, um, I can move on to the next one. So uh, I think this rule's getting through. So Jody, you're sure. going to talk about everything that's been going on so far for FY25. Yes, my, my, thanks for having me. Um, my intention is really to make sure that you guys feel in the know, up to speed, um, brief you on information that I know about that I can share in preparation for meetings that we will have jointly with the select board um, as it relates to budget discussions. So for, for the benefit of your time, their time, everybody's time, I just wanted to make sure that you guys felt up to speed and like I said, answer any preliminary questions you might have at first glance of anything that we go over um, so that you feel well prepared to have discussions with, with department heads. Um, they Nick, I just forwarded you printouts of what we have here. So it's in your inbox. Great, you thank you. <laughs> and I, I can share too on, on the screen if that's helpful. Nick, is it helpful if I share or do you wanna just pull up what he had? No, if you can share, that would be great just so that we're making sure that I'm we're looking at the same line items. That would be helpful. Thank you. Absolutely. It's not a problem. Um, so I'm pulling that up right now. Bear with me. So the first thing that we'll start to run through is um, the cover page is the FY25 budget summary. I like to look at this as more of an executive summary that's going to give you guys, you know, the, the down and dirty. Here's, here's kind of your summation of everything that's going on. Hope you see it. Bear with me, sorry guys. Okay. Share. Okay. Okay. So this is the budget summary. Um, like I said, it's just a, a quick snapshot of where we are. Um, revenue projections, expenditures, what our surplus deficit is. This this has changed even since last night. Um, so you'll see the number that I presented last night at the select board. Um, we finalized salary information for the fire department today, um, made a couple of other little changes on the expenditure side. And this number is going to kind of jockey up and down, you know, for the foreseeable future. Um, but essentially what this will give you is a quick snapshot of where we're at and what we're looking at for a deficit number um, as we really start to hone in on the budget process. It's nothing to be alarmed about. I told Mike not to have a heart attack last night, but um, it's a pretty change. typical situation to be in at this juncture. Um, and honestly, I, I don't mind this number and I'll tell you why, because along the way through every single department discussion that I've had with every department head, Reach for the stars, land on the moon, ask for what you think you need to ask for. Let's be really conservative in our estimates. Let's look at everything. Let's not forget a thing. And then let's drill down, right? So this number can only get better. I would rather not be in a $100,000 deficit looking for $100,000 only to realize I needed to find three. So this number is very manageable, although on, on the surface, it's like, that million dollars. What do you mean it's manageable? It, it really is, and I'll explain why. Um, what I'm going to bring you to now is kind of keep that off to the side, and then we're going to look at the second page of your handout, which is the revenue forecast. As we mentioned um, over the last couple of, uh, actually the last month or so, 
the, the estimates for revenue are in three main areas. Um, we're looking at the levy, we're looking at state aid, and we're looking at local receipts. The levy is pretty locked in, right? It's two and a half new growth um, from in, in the prior year levy from last year. That's pretty baked. Local receipts, um, there is some flexibility within those numbers if we need to move those up or down in order to balance the budget. So that's a lever on the revenue side. And then our cherry sheet estimate. So that's our state aid. Right now, that's a very conservative estimate. And I, I full transparency, these are all my notes. So these are notes as to this information. You guys can look down the right-hand column um, and sort of understand the methodology to which this forecast was put together. Cherry sheet estimates are going to change again, probably two Thanks, to folks. three more times. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Jeremy. You're welcome. I was going to ask you one. Yeah. So these, these will change probably two to three more times. So without, again, doing that, you know, up, down, up, down. I just said, you know what? The way that I'm basing our revenue forecast is based on actuals from last year. OK, so right now you can see by my notes, um, FY24 actuals for the offset and for our cherry seat, uh, sheet estimated receipts. The net of that is for FY25, I'm actually looking at $20,000 more in revenue, but I didn't put that down. I just said, you know what, we're going with our actual from last year. Anything that we get in above and beyond that is going to be bonus, right? It only makes our numbers better and we can... Um, you know, have a little bit more on the expenditure side. Sorry, was it FY24 actuals? Yeah, so if you look on the right hand side, uh, the notes, so 579, 214 was an FY23 actual. That was the FY24 estimate. It's a okay. little confusing, but the FY24 actual was 601,755, which is in the FY25 estimate. Can you see where I'm pointing? Look up on the oh, screen. Sorry. No. <laughs> See right here on this. If you look up there, yeah, uh, six hundred one six fifty five, and that was our FY twenty four actual. Oh, okay, totally. okay, okay. So I use the FY twenty four actual to budget yep. my FY twenty five estimate. Got it. Okay, the actual cherry sheet estimate is six twenty four three fifty five. I opted not to use that because that could change two or three more times. So, right. Yep. Um, the next update we can expect from there is when the house submits their budget. And that should be in the coming weeks, um, at which time we'll know sometimes there's no changes, sometimes there are changes. So at that point, you know, I'll, I'll keep an eye on it, add it to my notes. Um, but otherwise, until I have final FY25 numbers, I'm not going to update uh, this column. So that being said, uh, I'm pointing all this out because I just going back to that $500,000 number. This is one of those. Oh, Uh, six. Oh, geez. It, right. It's okay. We just started talking about the budget. Um, so, as I was Sorry, mentioning, the um, that five hundred thousand dollar number. You know, I'm just explaining this in a little bit so that you guys can understand. In order to balance the budget, there are some levers that we can push and pull a little bit mm -hmm. to make that number happen. But those are the levers on the revenue side. I can't touch the levy because it is what it is. Um, I can update the cherry sheet estimates based on the, the, you know, the newest budget, and then the local receipts. I can adjust a little bit should I need to, within reason. Um, I'm still going to, you know, stick with very conservative estimates because that is what ends up driving our free cash. Um, if we estimate too high and come in, you know, on target or a little higher, we can be in trouble, you know, from a budget standpoint. So we want to always make sure we're very conservative on our our revenues. Um, the next thing we'll flip to is the expenditures. So the first thing I'll have you do is look at your colored handout. Um, Nick, I'm going to bring that up right now because it's a different document for you. This is the document that I have had um, David and I worked through with all of our um, department heads, and they would put in this column C here. Oh, sorry, uh, Nick. I'm talking through it and I didn't even share. Sorry about that. Okay, here it is. So this is the FY25 department requests. Um, what we gave them was the accounts that this is all the account 
information that was approved as part of the FY24 adopted budget. So this is what's in the FinCom book. This is what we started out the fiscal year with. So this column is pretty locked um, because it was already approved. Column D, E, and F, D, E, F, and G really um, is what they're requesting as it relates to you know, the previous budget. You're gonna see a year over year variance, um, a year over year you know, dollar amount. Um, and then any information on the right hand side that sort of supports why that line item has gone up or down. This is the level of detail that I think you guys in taking a peek at um, will equip you with questions and potentially answer some of the questions, potentially invoke more questions, um, but it's a really great launching off point to understand each of the line items and each overall budget. What I tried to do as well is um, if, if we just look at the select board budget, for example, you're going to look at two sources. I'll bring your attention to these two numbers here, which is 133,100 and 44.16%. Overall, that budget went up $133,100 and up by 44.16%. Why, you ask? Well, the notes on the side indicate that we've increased reserve for negotiations by 123,500. Um, because we have four collective bargaining units bargaining this year. It's a negotiation year. And we have two retirees that will be uh, retiring. And we have anticipated payouts for vacation time um, and miscellaneous things there. So in order to cover those and get ahead of that, this is why we've budgeted in the fashion that we have. Um, so again, we've tried to provide as much context as we could based on information that we know. Um, you know, sort of sparing some additional details. I have my own notes. David has his notes. So if there's an area that you want to drill down on offline that you really have some deeper questions around, certainly feel free to reach out in advance of the department head meetings. But that's really the, the method to the madness here. Um, and we did it in such a way to, to give as much information as possible. Um, that being said, this is very detailed, so I'm going to bring us back to um, the summary page, and this is really, again, that Cliff Notes version of the expenditures that um, really become either a high dollar amount or a high percentage that I've called out as budget drivers. So these are the things that have really increased um, on the operational side and with an explanation. So, for example, the first one I've noted, oops, sorry, Nick. We're going to minimize this guy. We're going to share this one. Sharing, share again. Here, yes. All right. So this is um, back to the budget summary, which I thought would be a helpful way for you guys to sort of get the cliff note version and then dive deeper if you want to and, and see all the little tiny details of the accounts that weren't, you know, that did increase, but maybe not tremendously. Um, so kind of running down this list, we have reserved for negotiations. Again, I just talked through that one. Salary and wages for the next three line items. You'll notice that there were additional FTE asks for these three departments, um, fire, concom, and the library. Again, more details are embedded within the, the spreadsheet that we just reviewed. Um, it's an election year, so the elections accounts had an increase of about $11,000 to account for additional postage um, and requirements um, to handle the elections. Capital improvements, we seeded this line item. It's a new budget line item of $50,000. This is, again, you know whether this happens this year or not, it's just to really start that forward thinking process around let's bake in some capital improvement money into our operating budget so that we're not always needing you know town meeting to be able to appropriate funds to handle capital requests and or capital maintenance type things um civil defense ema the cliff notes on that really are the chief of police presented last night and talked through the emergency management plan for the town of Menden has been pretty much on a, um, I want to say like a volunteer oh, basis volunteer in that um, that the, the chief of police as well as a retired um, fire personnel have been the points of contact for all of our emergency management planning. And 
there are state requirements in order to qualify as a disaster recovery location, whether it be number of beds in a certain area, shower capabilities, capacity, that sort of thing. Um, so in the detail of this document, what you'll see embedded is that there was a request made for the town to really take a hard look at the disaster recovery efforts and formalize them and to invest in them in such a way that we'd be compliant for a true disaster recovery site and make sure that we truly had the resources um, available and folks were compensated for the role in being that person. So if you go back and look at the meeting last night, you'll find when um, when the chief starts talking through that, he can provide a lot more context than I can over his experience along with um, uh, Mark Bacchino. But the, those two have really kind of spearheaded this effort over the last, what, 10 years. And now it's really time to say, all right, we've done this for X amount of time. Let's look at formalizing this a bit more. I think one of the things that has come out about that is the, the type of climate related sort of disasters that have been happening, particularly in town here on Providence Road, uh, where we, you know, we lost basically a culvert that's now going to cost, you know, anywhere from 500000 to a million dollars to replace. Um, and the need, those kind of type of events are continuing to continue to happen. And I think that, you know, in order for us to be prepared, we have to have personnel on board that are getting paid and uh, coordinating those activities. And like uh, Jody had said, you know, a lot of it relates to, you know, state standards as well as uh, the need to uh, to be prepared for any kind of disaster, not only a rainstorm, but a snowstorm, a hurricane, any kind of natural disaster that the town might experience. Um, the next one is a regional dispatch assessment. So this was part of the regional dispatch, the dispatch um, agreement when we outsourced dispatch with the MEC. And the town's obligation for FY25 is 119.1. And that is up over last year of nothing. So that's a, a, that's a, that's a huge jump um, and obviously a budget driver. So therefore it's on here. The other couple of things, um, Norfolk Aggie, that is a school choice situation where their tuition increase um, wasn't terrible. It was about 4%. Uh, their special ed tuition rate jumped about 39%. Um, but that's very, that, that sounds a lot worse than it is because we're talking about a jump from $5,100 to $7,300. Um, there was some explanation behind that, um, which I can go back into my email. I did not memorize, but it's legit. It's just what it happened to be from FY23 to FY24, and then now from FY24 to 25, and it's sort of the trickle down impact of that. Um, it's not related to us like an over. A yeah, point. it's, it's, it's no. basically a, 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 an even. I think there's one more student that had. Yeah, so so this this increase. So I increased this, and this is again, this is one of those levers, right? I'm very conservative here because Norfolk Aggie, we currently have 10 students enrolled. Um, grades nine through 12. We have three seniors rolling off. Okay. So that brings our number down to potentially seven. Um, the folks that require the special ed services are in grade 10. So they'll require those again next year. That being said, we have six active applications that have already been turned in. So there's a, a potential, right, for us to have as little as seven, but as many as 12, right? So Again, what's our conservative estimate? I went with 11 students, right? And the thing is, is that we have those active applications. Two things can happen. We can stick with six. We can get more. We can have five offers and no except. There's lots of things that can happen. We will know more the very first week of April. Um, and then beyond that, there can still be changes over the summer. So my conservative estimate here was for 11 students and we'll see where the chips fall, but I'd rather not, again, be looking for funds. I'd rather say <laughs> we can peel back a little bit, but that's why that number is so high. It's one more student than we update than we allocated for last year. We also have the special ed um, increase, and we also have a 4% tuition increase. So all that is what makes up that 15 on 8. 
Uh, Worcester Regional Re Retirement System, our actuarial evaluation, which basically measures our health, uh, sorry, our health, our retirement benefits through the trust, um, is up about 9.05%, not about, it's pretty, pretty spot on, 9.05%. Um, we got that number at the end of January, first week in February. It's, it's pretty standard um, for other communities as well. It's based on a whole slew of factors, but our increase was net of $95,000. Medical, um, we had increases here, both on the active medical and the uh, retiree medical side of things. Um, this is strictly for healthcare benefits. Um, we had an increase of 4.98% on the active medical side, and uh, sorry, on the uh, retiree MedEx side, and that basically that's retirees that take our um, healthcare benefits prior to being on Medicare. The active medical is anybody that currently takes our health benefits, and that was up 5.88% over last year. The trust average on that was six and a half, so we're still below the trust average, but we're still up 5.8%. Five, 5 who wants to be the one to ask it this year? A net increase of 69 grand, about the 75-25. Yeah. Yeah. It's usually me, so yeah, I've already asked right. a bunch of questions. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, so those, those are, that's a great question. Um, those are things that will always come up. Um, one of the discussion points that came up last night was the idea of having an insurance advisory committee, which David had brought up um, as well, a benefits review committee, which we used to have intact years ago. Um, that really should be reconstituted, but there is an option to look at, re, you know, reducing the retiree portion, paid portion of benefits. Um, there is an option to look at the um, 75-25 to say 70-30. Um, we did drop from 80-20 to 75-25. Um, that would have to be bargained. Yeah, that those exercises have not been done yet. Um, in fact, the renewals for next year have already been signed um, because they are January January renewals. Yeah. Or they, yeah. So, so they're actually we, from May, but they, they from didn't May. give the rates earlier. Right. So we'd be looking at that option for probably 2026. Mm -hmm. um, but those are all good things to look at. And I would say that probably a due diligent exercise from now until the next discussion around this would be reconstituting an insurance advisory committee to be able to really look at these things and um, make some recommendations. Actually, I did do a little background research on the insurance advisory committee as well as Brendan. Had, oh, good. Had, uh, actually, during the meeting, I didn't know he had done that, but he sent it to me and I'd oh, nice. the next day. Um, it's not really an option. We have accepted the chap chapter 32 and the section related to it. The town is required to have a an insurance advisory committee that's comprised of certain unions, uh, employees, retirees, uh, a member, I believe it's the board of selectmen. And the purpose of that is to evaluate and recommend proposals to the town regarding said insurances. Now, I know everybody says, well, you know, on the retiree side, you know, we really don't have to pay them the 75. The thing is, is that that's really it, it would have to be a recommendation of the uh, the insurance advisory committee. And now you have the insurance advisory committee is made of employees who at some point are going to retire and retirees that are going to take a hit as a result of that. So, you know, you can speculate how that's going to go. You know, the reality of the fact is the, the fact is that it probably wouldn't be reduced. And at this point, I would say even in terms of past practice, that would be a tough one to roll back. If you've been offering a benefit to somebody for 15 years of retirement, now all of a sudden, said, wait, 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 wait a second. Well, yeah, but there's a difference between changing people who have the benefit now versus- you can do, Yeah, you, you do say, all right, starting yeah, in. Yeah. But those people that are close yeah. to retirement are not gonna say, you know, take the benefit away from me. I don't really need it. The, the, the good part of that is, if there is a good part, um, is that the premiums for the insurances because of Medicare for retirees is, is often a supplemental policy, which is a lot less than a single or a family policy. How would we go about changing it for future employees? 
because it would have I, to, yeah it, that because that's I, I don't know if you remember I, I I said this two years ago in one of the meetings and I said we keep talking about it every year yeah so it, in, in next year I, I remember sarcastically saying we'll talk about this next year which we did and I said we'll talk about next year which that's why I just said it was right I guess what I'm saying is that it, it, it's great talking about this but what would we do and again I I Fully support what you said. We don't want to touch you know, it, the it current be, people. Yeah, this would yeah. be an easy exercise because you guys exactly. are looking for what's our what's our impact, right? right? So yeah. I, I can future, tell you. You know, even if it's there, you say like, okay, so I can affect the place for five years. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, honestly, interestingly just, enough, the same discussion I was having um, this time last year with the Dunstable board um, as their interim, because they had also said, well, why can't we just cut? The retirees back to 50 were only the losses the maximum that you can or the it is 50 the minimum you can offer is 50. you know you can offer more but you, you can't offer less than, than 50. i can tell you guys it's not a difficult exercise and i can um I'm, I'm, it's easy math and we have 44 employees so it's not it's not tricky so the way that we figure benefits and i can tell you right now because i just got the renewal and the proposal and we just sent that to back to Maya, um, but essentially we would take the HMO plan, we would take whatever the family plan is, which is the higher of the two when we calculate, and you'll see this as we go through um, this as well. Anytime we add an FTE, just a mental note, it costs us about $26,000, $27,000 to add them as a full-time employee. So it's not just the ask of hours, you know, when someone wants to convert from part-time to full-time, Okay, that's it's not just the salary. Um, you guys know that, but I like to call it out just to make sure that um, you have kind of the accurate number in your head. But we take, for example, $2,487.11 for the month for a family plan. We take 75% of that, we'd multiply it by 12, and then we'd add $2,000 because we cover the $2,000 deductible on the plan. So that number nets out to be about twenty six, twenty seven thousand dollars. So if we were to look at changing that to be seventy thirty, then we could take seventy percent of that, multiply it by twelve, divide you know all the things. And so it's not a tough exercise, and I can get. But you can't do it unilaterally, right? Yeah. You can't all of a sudden say, "Well, geez, right. we're going to buy," and, and the police say, "Okay, we'll take that." Because we're getting something over here. All right. But the you other union. You're bargaining with every union. Yeah. And so and it's not, if you get the police to agree, it doesn't mean the other, right. you know, three or four unions and, and then the town hall employees or employees that are of the town that are not union personnel have, will also have to have some say in whether or not that, that changes. Well, it's, yeah. So it'd be the four unions and then the non union personnel would fall under the personnel policy, which would just have to be adopted by the, and updated by the board. So, it's really those four chan it's those not, five it's channels. Not, it's five channels. It's an easy exercise contracts. mathematically. Yep. But right. That, that's what I meant. I meant it's not an easy. Uh, I think it'd be interesting to know what is the numbers. opportunity of saving. Yep. There's the yep. effort to go through it and the impact of doing so and yep. the likelihood of it happening. Right. So it'd just be good to have all that laid out because at the end of the day, maybe it's not enough money to even. Yeah. Buy exactly. Buy, but right? but <laughs> it would go a long way to say that we did our due diligence yeah. right and did the exercise and even if there was a savings the value add is not there because you'd upset more people than you'd save money and yeah, so if you're going to save the balance, 20 grand like it, right okay, that sounds like a big number and that's nice but the, the overall impact to right. the entire right. municipality the entire budget like that's not moving the needle and there's negatives to it totally well, right so the other right. thing you need to take into account is that every employee that takes our insurance generally gets a cost of living increase and every year the insurance goes up so if you, they, in some years it may actually be a wash in some years that cost of living increase is right out the window they're making the same amount of money technically so you know it's not an it's not an easy uh problem to solve yeah i get it the math the math is easy and it allows us to digest the opportunity better yeah. Right. And either stop talking about it because it actually doesn't Make net sense. fruit, net valuable fruit at the end of the day. Because um, it'd be nice to say, OK, we, we did the due diligence. We looked at it. Doesn't net enough. And we can stop asking every single year. And yeah. when people ask us, 
we have a response right. more than just, yep. I don't know, nobody wants to do anything. We keep bringing it up. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, so the, the math is easy and I can commit to doing that exercise for you guys. Yeah. That's not a problem at all. Um, just give me a tiny bit of time um, to really get that done, but I have that, I'll, I'll get that done for you guys. The other question I have concerning that is, what are we in line with other towns? Yes. If we are, so, then that yeah, would be I can tell you the majority of the communities are 75, 25 or 70, 30. Right. There's not a lot. Of, there's two communities, I think she said, in the the area. Uh, and I'm talking about the area. Maya is yeah. big, yeah. right, across the state. Two communities that are at 80, 20 um, and maybe onesie, twosies that are at 60, 40. But the bulk of the communities, yeah. 75, 25. Those are, of course, the same questions I asked. Yeah, no. I am totally no, aligned with you guys. Everything you that. 80-20. There was a, a yeah, day yeah. when there wasn't, you know, any negotiation on that. Yeah. And when the, insurance was cheap. Yeah. What about the retiree how we're paying? Is that also in line? I'd be curious. In other words, do other communities, towns and cities pay for the retirees to stay on the medical till they have well, the, well, Yes. Okay. Another classic example in Dunsell. Mm -hmm. Dunsell is one of the few communities in Massachusetts that doesn't provide gap insurance. Uh, paying the gap. All right, so if you're a police officer, you get your number of years and they get your pension and they can retire earlier and they retire at 55, for example, or 58, there's a period of seven years that they're going to have to buy their own insurance rather than buy the insurance through the town and yeah. get it at the reduced rate. So that, that you know, that that's a real stickler because then you start losing qualified people who say, I can go next door to Tingsboro and I can retire in three years and they'll pay for my insurance yeah. and they'll pay for my wife's insurance. Thank you. Had a question? Yes. Um, are we still paying the deductible for employees as well? So there is a yes. deductible. $2,000. And we're paying that right for them. Yes. So, so is that something that could be looked at because it seems a bit unusual for me? That is an unusual benefit. Can, can I just say something about this? And the, and, and the only reason why I mentioned it is my wife, that's where she works in commissions and car insurance. And, and I work for MGB, Eston and Brigham, and they started it this year. That it's actually cheaper, I believe, and I could be wrong. It's getting to the point where it's cheaper for employers to pay deductibles and have a higher deductible plan, knowing that not every single employee, it's all actuarial now, mm -hmm. yeah. is going to, to use it. And that's just my guess mm -hmm. is what's, and I don't know, you can speak. Yeah, that, so, so the last time was. benefits were negotiated um, through the previous town administrator, I do know that that was a factor yeah. in being able to take a higher deductible plan right. and then pay the deductible portion um, for employees, but I, I can certainly circle back with that. The higher the deductible, the lower the rate. Right, and that, it, the only reason why I mentioned it is yeah. I never thought it would happen to us, and it just did this past November when they came up with a plan where they, they're they paying deductibles. You know, on the surface, it looks great, and then you start to read it, and it's like... Yeah. Yes. Well, that's the same thing with, yep. for example, we offer a family plan, and we offer an individual plan. Now, there's a hybrid plan that you can bring in, which is a one plus. Sure. So your kids are 26 and they're out of the house and you don't have to worry about it anymore. The problem with that is they have to make up the, the revenue some way. So both of them get taxed with the additional cost of offering that benefit. So it's really, you know, if the if we could, we discussed that when I was in Tree Town. Well, you know, we can get a, a, a one plus and I was all in favor of that because I, you know, it's just my wife and I and we, the kids are gone and all of that. But then we realized it would cause the other two plans to go up to subsidize that one and one. So I can follow back with some of that information for you guys probably yes, right. next week. If that's okay. Um, I have about 10 minutes, Mike, so I'm going to run through the rest of this. So the outstanding budget items, and I put sort of a little plus or minus here because depending upon how things go, um, these are just, again, more of those levers that we can look at. The Mendon Upton budget, obviously there's an iterative process there um, with different variations of their budget. Um, their next update to us is going to be on or around March 18th. Um, BVT, we anticipate another update around March 14th. And then North Fork Aggie, we're going to get an enrollment update um, at the beginning of April. So we'll see kind of where we're tracking with those. 
Um, the other thing is FY25 insurance rates for unemployment, police, fire, other uh, worker, workers' comp and general liability insurances. Um, we have um, some communication out to our insurance partners, and we're just waiting to hear back on those renewals. Those renewals aren't until October, um, but again, any information that we have from previous years, in addition to um, rate history, is important for me to be able to plan you know, for FY25, even though I don't know the exact numbers yet, I'd like to at least get a ballpark of how we're running. We, they can look at claims history. They can look at other things that help inform what our rates are going to be. So at least any bit of information is helpful there. What, sorry, what's reflected currently in the budget as far as an inc uh, increase? It's flat, flat right now. Flat. Yep, flat right now, pending, um, pending information. So I did, I put everything in kind of flat, um, but it's not going to, the first version of the budget isn't even in our software yet. So until I have all the inputs, then I'll put the first version in, right? I'm not, it's sort of unobstructed. I'm not um, making changes to what departments requested. I'm certainly vetting them with them and saying, are you sure you wanna put this in there? Okay, if you're gonna go for that, your actual number is X, you know, and kind of help guiding them to make sure that the number, the quality of their numbers are in there correctly. Um, but as far as their raw asks, you're going to see their raw asks. You and know, that's going to be the the process of deliberation between right. The board That'll be the first. The finance committee and and I honestly I think that having joint meetings is really important only because what happens in a joint meeting you don't have a meeting with the police department yeah. and the board doesn't have a meeting with the police department. No one mentioned because I'm in the police department. Yeah, no, that's what we've done. You're both getting the same. Years, yeah. The same okay. message. You're not saying, well, at the RINCON meeting, you said this and this, and right. over here you said this and that, and now all of a sudden you've got a divide there that doesn't need to happen. The other approach here, too, is that mm -hmm. I, I, I've i heard loud and clear from this board in the past as well, is that you kind of get the skinny down version and what somebody else put forward, and you're like, wait a minute, like what, what was the original ask? I kind of want to see, you know, across the board, what is everybody saying and what is everybody asking for? And I want to see, you know, all of it so that I can, you know, make our own recommendations based on what we think, right? So the nice part about this is that you're going to see all the raw asks, which is why you're also seeing a larger number. Yep. So that's part of it. Um, it's all part of the process. I think there's a good level of detail in here, um, you know, in that, that color copy. It's tiny. I would recommend um, taking a peek, <laughs> taking a peek at it on SharePoint. Um, it's out there. It's in the same document folder that we had last year. I sent the uh, the link out to perfect. The Excellent. <laughs> um, so definitely feel free to take a, a a look at it. You know, circle back with Mike. Mike, circle back with me for questions. If there's anything that I can answer in advance of meeting with the boards, I'm happy to to provide some insight. I think that would be helpful so that you guys feel like. You've got as much information as everybody else um, walking into these meetings. So that kind of brings us back to the next steps on this front page, which are we met with the FinCom with you guys tonight. Um, we'll prepare and send a budget memo to department heads. Um, what that basically is, is an invitation to come and discuss your budget. So we're going to do sort of two things. One is, hey, we want to hear from you. Come discuss your budget. And then if the people that um, we want to discuss their budget with them don't respond, we're going to say, hey, we want to just really have a question with you. Um, so it'll be sort of a, a you know, a, a self-selection sign into it, but then you also may be asked to come present your budget just to really give everybody an opportunity to be heard. Um, so I will work through scheduling the department heads for those budget reviews um, in meetings with the FinCom and select the select board. I did speak with the executive admin for the select board as well as the chair yesterday to say, this is how you know you and I had talked, Mike, about structuring it. So now it's just putting pen to paper and saying, okay, here's how they're going to go. Um, and then schedule joint FinCom select board meetings starting next week. Okay. Um, and actually, Mike, I think you had said, yeah, start, yeah. Skip 320 and yeah, we said 36 three yep. and then skip two weeks. Yep. And then the following two weeks after exactly. That. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> and I think that that'll that'll work well with the select board as well so that they can help hold their regular meetings and then they're planning on meeting every week. Um, so if they we have a joint one together on the 6th, um, we skip the 13th, we skip the 20th and let them have their own meeting on the 20th. 
and then resume a joint meeting yeah. on the 27th. And then the first week in April, I think that will be pretty covered um, as it relates to most departments. And like I said, whatever information you guys can educate yourselves on in advance and then fire your questions at me first, vet them. Um, I'm happy to answer anything. Same thing with David to provide additional context. Or I might say, you know what, Adam, I wasn't asked that question before. That's a great question. Go ahead and ask it at the open session, right? And then we can sort of engage in some dialogue um, around things that may not have been answered at that point. Uh, was was uh, Laura good with uh, that schedule? Yes. Okay. Yep. So was the select board chair. So I think okay. that what we what I just need to do is I want to put it on paper yeah. and push it to them and say, okay, does this still make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Mike, this still makes sense. And then you can post, they can post, and Perfect. Yeah. we should be good. Be I'll probably leverage MS bookings again um, to kind of put that the... pretty well, actually. It was awesome. We'll put the... Um, the dates out there and you know 30 minute session so to speak on the agenda hey when do you want to come present what works for you um what week obviously you know police and fire and highway i would anticipate being sort of the longer ones um the second longer one behind that would probably be conservation this year just because they're adding to staff they're looking to add to staff um as well as the library other than that i don't anticipate a lot of you know deep discussion from other departments, though I don't want to limit their participation um, with talking through things with the boards. We also can't forget the schools. Yes, yes, yep. Um, the okay. good thing about that this year too is that Mike has been involved in a lot of the subcommittee meetings. So I think when we um, get with Jay, we had a preliminary meeting with Jay Byer on their initial ask. And so that, that you'll see within the budget. We funded their minimum local contribution, which is still $1.8 million over what we funded them last year, which gives them like a 4.5 or 4.8% increase year over year. But the minimum local contribution net change was about $525,000. So what we committed to baseline was to fund the initial change in the minimum local contribution, right? But if you look at our bottom line number year over year, even funding that change, it's still our funding is still $1.8 million over just the minimum local contribution. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we just didn't fund anything additional this year, meaning any of their additional line item. And well, we, our MLC went down last year, right? Just, a little bit. Yeah. So it wasn't the so yes. So our assessment went down by about $40,000. So it wasn't the minimum local contribution. It was the overall assessment because we had additional and transportation built in there. So we were able to yield the benefit of that um, budget wise this year. So even though our contribution, I'm doing my best to explain with keeping you guys on board, even though our contribution went up this year, our budgeted amount didn't go up by the same amount as the contribution because we yielded that $40,000 change yeah. from last year. That makes sense. Yeah. So you'll, you'll kind of see that noted on the side of the budget. Um, I know that's a little deeper dive, but that um, that's kind of where we are with the school. We are very, very totally open and transparent with the school saying, yeah. listen, we're in the same situation as you. Like we have contract negotiations for all bargaining units this year. We have, you know, our 9% on our actuarial evaluation for the regional retirement system, our medical costs, like, so they're in the same they rooms kind of too. what the E&D was and that, yeah. you know, that they were willing to subsidize a little bit more this year than right. in past years. And they seemed like they were willing to work with us. With yeah, the minimum. very much so. Good. There was no hostility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good. Yeah, awesome. so. Um, I know you have to leave. Uh, real quick yeah. on the uh, FinCon clerk position. Oh yes. Just want to touch on that. Mm -hmm. So we added in a stipend for that. Mm -hmm. um, so once the budget gets approved at some point, assuming that stays, mm -hmm. uh, we'll have Ellen post to officially get a clerk and relieve relieve you of your duties. Right. <laughs> so. Okay. No, yeah. <laughs> so so there's a two thousand dollar stipend right now that was built into the budget. Um, the previous town administrator had sort of taken that roll out of the FinCom and dumped it in the finance department, but we didn't have resources necessarily in the finance department to be able to fill that role with the FinCom. And so I talked to Mike this week and said, 
what do you want to do with your commission? Do you with your committee? Do you do you guys want a clerk or do we need to figure out how to facilitate mm -hmm. that through other means? Like this money is still earmarked in the budget for it. Yeah. And it makes, I mean, in my mind, it makes sense for you guys to have that. Um, might seem to agree. So if it's okay with everybody, we'll just add that back into the budget in a line item okay. within the FinCom to have a finance clerk. Yes. Okay. And one final observation, like you said, yes. uh, in terms of the finance committee reserve fund, in every community that I've been in, and it's probably six or seven, eight, that number is a lot more than what you guys have in there. And it really should be higher than it is because emergencies are, they come up all year long and you don't want to have to go to a town meeting when you have an emergency. If there's a quick fix that can be in it, the, the key is that it's an emergency. It's not, oh, we want to increase Bob's salary by $10,000, give it to us. It's a truly an emergency, an unplanned circumstance that has to be addressed immediately and giving the finance committee the resources to do that by increasing the amount. I'd probably say I've been in communities where it's been 75 to hundred thousand dollars. I would say 50 would be better in this situation. It was right now somewhere around 20. 21, one, three. Yeah. So that would be a, a recommendation in for you to make. I was I had actually changed it in the spreadsheet and then I pulled it back and said, well, it's not my thought to change it. So. Okay. And if you don't use it, it goes back to free cash anyway. So yeah, no, that's a great recommendation. Okay. All right. Thank you. I don't want to keep you longer. So uh, yeah, no, that's good. Um, Do I have to stay because? Uh, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you can yeah. stay longer than. Yeah. yeah. I'll be sitting here by myself, right? Thank you both. Very helpful. Okay. Actually, uh, I just want to recognize uh, Jody and all of her. She's uh, uh, taken on the role of spearheading the budget, and she's done an awesome job. Up to this point, and and I'm really happy with the way things are going in terms of her taking the lead and 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 pushing this thing forward. So I echo everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, honest guys, whatever you you guys need as far as information communication. Um, yeah. We don't know each other all that well, but I've started to kind of work a bit more with Mike, and just sort of now that I have some freedom to kind of do what I do. Um, I am more than happy to share information, get your ideas, get your thoughts. You, some of you have been here longer than I've been here and your history with, uh, we've asked this question 17 times. Like, I just want to say, I hear you. I don't disagree with a lot of the things that, um, you guys have said, and I often share the same thoughts. So, um, together, I think we can start to bring a little bit more collaboration, um, to this process and visibility into this so that you guys feel like a a part of the process, not just sort of yeah, someone so on the outside part. at the end saying, okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. The, <laughs> the collaborative process of the next steps of, okay, we're here with the raw data and the raw asks, right. and now the, well, yeah. we're not going to accept this from this department and that from that part, like the shell game of how we're going to move things around and cut or add things. Yep. Um, the FinCom wants to be part of that. It doesn't need to be the full committee, but we want to make sure we have they come representation at those conferences. And in, in, in town meeting, you, you have to get up and make recommendations too. Yep. So that, you know, right. And, um, so so if you if you if there is a true uh, disparity between what people feel between the board and we haven't previously had that visibility. Right. There hasn't been a lot. It's just been community. here's the final number, right. and that's that. my goal. And is even with it's been to equip you with information, yeah. equip you with information, let you guys do your thing, the expertise, the knowledge, the great perspective that you all have. Now you can take that information and do what you do with it. Thank you. Okay. Yep. I appreciate it. All right. I'm gonna take two. Okay. You don't see me. Thanks, guys. I'm sorry. I honestly got it. That was it was all because of me. This is very, thank you all for making the accommodation. Oh, too. Right. I actually I, went in the calendar. I, I, said, play, well, I play sports during the week. And so I'm I'm not going to miss my game tonight. So thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> like after last night and tonight. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, Mama's going to sleep. Yeah. Good. <laughs> one, one night meeting. You have a trifecta. I know, right? See that? <laughs> thank all you. right, guys. Thanks. Thank thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, so the only other item here is items not anticipated for eight hours in advance. And one thing I did not anticipate uh, coming up is the recommendation. I can't reserve number. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So we could discuss that if folks are interested in discussing that. Yeah, and just let me know. Yeah, it's just a, it's a suggestion. Yeah, you know, it, 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 if you're happy mm -hmm. with the way things have been going over the past several years and feel comfortable with that number. Uh, and oh, the only reason I mentioned this because, you know, we've had a couple instances in the last, well, I've been here going on eight months, where, you know, we could have tapped into that yep. and, and very easily, it got, it got more complicated than it had to yep. be, particularly the province road, you know, we're sitting there saying, well, geez, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? Or another example is that one of the fire engines breaks down and the repair has to be made because you have to provide you know, public safety service right. to the residents. You don't want to say, well, we need to wait till we go to town meeting. And yeah, that's a true emergency. Yeah. So Mr. thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, Mr. Chair, based on based on the recommendation here, based on the experience in other communities, I mean, I, I wouldn't do precisely what was recommended here that we ought to shoot for fifty thousand dollars. If for no other reason the Provide here as an example, right. which we've seen of Providence Road not once but twice. Yeah, uh, I couldn't agree more. Someone who lives on the other side of Providence, I guess, in fact, couldn't agree more. So, <laughs> so I, uh, I would so move um, fifty thousand in the uh, income and the income. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right. Any discussion on that number or any discussion on the? The only discussion I would have is, and um, I would just be curious from a historical perspective um, for Mike Amandalia. I, I know he's not here tonight. Just a curious, like I, I know it's been continued to been reduced over the years. I'm just curious if there was a point in time where it was that, and you know, just out of curiosity more than anything else. Yeah, I, uh, I concur. That's uh, I would appreciate his historical knowledge in this space as well. I had a little bit of that. I don't know if it was last night or another meeting where somebody said it was substantially higher. Yeah. For some reason it was cut back. Okay. But you can't do a lot of twenty-one thousand dollars, particularly if it's uh, in these days. Not in this, not especially not in this day and age. No. Can't even fix the leaf suit. Well, what the blower, right? Last yeah. Time. So I guess uh, I guess my my question <laughs> in the discussion would be: Is fifty thousand enough? Should we should we think about seventy-five? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, as Jody said, shoot for the stars, hit the moon. If we need to peel it back, that's one area we could yeah. say, let's work that, Yeah, it, when you get to that point where you say, $25,000 and you roll it back. Yeah. So I, I would ask, do we want to make it seven five, and then as part of the, you know, fine tuning of the budget, use that as a lever uh, for opportunity for production? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to uh, join you in the uh, 75. I think your point is really well taken. That 21 isn't enough, Not uh, and, and right. that yeah. makes sense to me. So um, I'm certainly prepared to amend and go to 75, Mr. Chair. With, uh, and then we can, you know, uh, ask Mike for some historical perspective. We can also ask Joe to do some analysis of places where that may have been able to be tapped and see how that relates back to the actual number. So. Mm -hmm. And if you don't use it, go yeah. back. It's not like you're, you're saying, you know, we're throwing $75,000 off there for the win. Okay. It all falls back at the end of the year. No, uh, thank you for your perspective because the mere fact that you're running into some administrative headwinds over that is enough for me. So yeah. appreciate your perspective. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I agree. Any other uh, discussion? So do we want to do 75? 75. I would yeah. still move at 75. All right. Well, all those in favor at increasing thing com reserve to 75k. Aye. 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 Perfect. The ayes have it, and I will let Jody know. That awesome. Wouldn't, that wouldn't even come close to taking uh, taking care of Providence. So. <laughs> no, but if we need, I know, to, I know, no, yeah, no. If we need to spend more no. and spend anything to get it up and going. And that was that was part of the discussion under the capital uh, planning was like. The flexibility to move quickly is kind of apparent that it's not there in our current right. structure. That's right. right. So we can kind of adding to these levers that we have to use to not have a special meeting, not have a levy, not take up, you know, fix it when it needs to be fixed instead of a, a long run up process. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I took. I'm sorry, you mean to speak? No, no. I, I took the 75 ask in the province, for example, as being not the repair, but the mobilization, for example, yeah. to get the Jersey barriers there, the, it blocked to have the police there to, you know, extra duty so that we could make, you know, a one lane pass there and everything. It sounds to me like the repair, I mean, if the representation is fair is somewhere between a half a million and a million dollars is, is oh well yeah is going to be the, yeah. the fix for that location yeah. but the point was really well taken i thought we shouldn't we shouldn't have our our our, our town hall team tangled up in administrative um you know even i guess i thought i wish i thought about fincom reserve when that happened because uh our kids had an issue so those those of us who live on the other side with the busing of getting kids to school, it became a massive problem. And there was some confusion around whether buses would get police escorts the opposite way down cemetery. Down cemetery, cemetery yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I think there was expectations <laughs> and <laughs> then, <laughs> yeah, and then and then it, 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 there was confusions around when buses were supposed to call versus when police were able to show up and whether they were on the call or not. And you know the chief is trying to make sure we're not you know spending money all over the place. We could have used FinCon Reserve to say, look, pay somebody overtime to sit here in the morning and the afternoon, yeah, and just to take care of that, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Oh, okay. So I, thought, um, I thought they put the bus and then have them go reverse, so they wouldn't be going down one way. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> uh, all right. Any other items not anticipated forty-eight hours in advance? Not All right. Can I get a motion to close the meeting? So move. Second. Second. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting closed. Have a good, have a good night, guys. You too. Thanks. Thanks. See ya. Thanks. See ya. That happened twice, didn't it? With the, it was closed twice. Province? Yep. Yeah.